My goal is to give you a good understanding of every capability Notions Buttons Features has through a demonstration and then recreating that demo from scratch so that you can see how this new automation feature works and start implementing it into your workspace. Now, before I get started, there is a link to this template in the description. So if you want to do this alongside with me, I learn really well when I'm doing something, I'm more hands-on. So if you're like me, feel free to grab that. Or you can, of course, download it, save it to your workspace and reference it when you're integrating buttons into your workspace and your workflow. So without further ado, let's get started. If I click start, we're going to see the first capability buttons have in Notion. And that is basically the same exact thing the template block used to do, which is just spawning a set of blocks that we define. The way that we would do this, let's go ahead and create our first button by typing in slash BU something something and hitting enter and clicking insert blocks. You'll see here, uh, this is every action that a button can do. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and focus on just this first one, which is inserting blocks. If I click that, now I'll be able to give this a name. And now anything we type in here, hi, bye, pretty crazy stuff. I click the button. There you have it. So that's feature number one. Um, stick around uh, towards the end of this. I'm going to give some caveats and tips with how to use each one of these. And this button can be a little bit weird. But for now, um, for all you just wanting a quick start, let's move on to number two. We have adding pages to databases. It's family chore day. And I have three chores that I always do on family chore day. If I don't want to add each one of these individually into my task list, what I can do is click this button here and boom, we have three tasks with assignees and due dates. The way that this works, let's go ahead and recreate this, is through the, let's go ahead and create the button, through the second option here, which is add page two. We are going to do this three times, one for each chore. So we added a page, clean the house to the to-do list database here. So let's go ahead and add another chore. Say we need to walk Oscar. We'll put a dog emoji there because Oscar is not a human. He is a dog. And now we want to add a page to, we're going to select the to-do list. And here's the name of the page. And we can edit the assignee to be either the person who clicked the button or we can uh, allocate it to a specific individual each time. I'm going to go ahead and click my name here since I love going on walks. And then we can add a due date and we can add a predefined status if you want. So we're going to have this be not started and we're going to have this be either now, which is the date and time, today, which is just the date, not the time, or it could be a predefined date every single time you click the button. We're going to do today. And now if we click done, We'll see here when I click walk Oscar, that page is defined and I have another chore to do. I love adulting. Capability number two that buttons can do is edit pages within a database. So instead of adding a brand new page like we just did, say we want to just edit a page that already exists or a series of pages that already exists, we can do that with this next feature. So I have here a habits database and say every time I clicked one of these buttons, I want it to check mark the habit for today's page. So you'll see we have a whole week worth of pages. And every time I click this, it'll go to today, which is March 20, March 26, and mark that off. So how would this be created? Well, let's create one where we do all three. We're going to be doing edit pages in. So I click that. And we select a database. Now, this is a very important step. Pages to edit. This is where we set the filter. So which page do we want to edit? By default, it's going to edit every single page, which we do not want. So I don't want my, you know, every single habit to be checked off for every single day I have in my day's database. I just want it to be for today. So this is where we would set that filter. So we're going to have it be the date because this is the actual date type property is and then we can have it be today, tomorrow, yesterday. Notion's done a pretty good job of predefining these uh, pretty intuitive selections there. And then we're going to select the properties that we want to edit. So we got that. We're done. And now when I, if I uncheck these and click that, boom, today's date, all three checked off. There you go. Feature number three is opening pages. I just should not have put created here. This is opening pages. Now, what is this? Well, when I click 
this button, it opens a dedicated page that I selected. Pretty amazing. And here is the shameless plug. Feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you. So this is pretty standard. I'm not going to recreate it because it's pretty easy. But what you would do is just hit the open page here and choose the page that it opens and then choose the way in which that page opens. This should be pretty familiar uh, for if you're a regular Notion user. And lastly, you'll notice that I missed one, right? I missed this particular action, which is show confirmation. This isn't an actual action that affects a database, but it is a basically a precautionary step that will allow us to add a layer of security for buttons that might accidentally get clicked. And here's another cool thing. So say you're editing this. I think the editing page functionality is going to be where this confirmation step is most useful because this has the highest potential of, you know, accidentally messing things up. So say we want to add, we want to go back here and be like, yo, are you really sure you did all three habits? What we could do is go to this action block, click add step above, and then have it be a confirmation page. And then we can edit this like so. And if we click done, and then we click this, boom. Now we have this extra confirmation. So the action was not done yet. It'll only occur if I click continue, which let's be honest, I didn't meditate today. So there we have it. And that's basically it. Let me know if you have any questions uh, from there. And if you just wanted a brief overview, now's a good time to stop. But I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit more details on a couple of these features here. So the first example I want to talk about is the insert blocks action here. Say I want this to be by and high to the left and right of one another in a multi-column situation and I drag and drop it in here, you'll notice, boom, it immediately snaps those out and it puts them one on top of the other. Pretty frustrating, um, but there is a workaround. So what I would suggest is creating a page and then naming it anything um, and then making it an empty page going out. Add everything you want the button block to spawn inside of here and configure it in the layout that you desire. So in our situation here, we want these to be side by side. I'll go back and now we have this page with the proper layout inside it. And we would go ahead and open this block, drag this page inside it. And then if we click this little icon, we can turn this into a bulleted list and this example you can also i think a few other ones work like edited or like headings and task uh, text you basically just want to unpack it by changing the type from a page to something else as you see here if i backspace backspace get rid of that extra fluff we have the proper layout so that's one way around that and then the other thing i wanted to talk about is when you're adding pages to blocks you can actually only add 10 at a time so if i had over 10 chores that i do every chore day uh, i'd have to probably create a, a separate button for that at least as of now so there's two nuances, but yeah, this is still an amazingly powerful feature. Let me know how you're using it and let me know if this helps in the comments. Stay productive, y'all. Peace.